Hello everyone, it's Jabari here. You ever wonder what happened when Europeans first made contact with Africans? As in like the very first encounter between Europeans and Africans, not the follow-up trade relations established between them after the initial contact. And I know it's a very vague question and borderlining senseless because Africans and Europeans have been in contact with one another since ancient times. Notably the Roman Empire with borders stretching as far south as Egypt on the fringes of the Kushite Empire and even some lesser known Roman expeditions making it as far south as the Niger River Valley in the Lake Chad regions of West Africa. As I've discussed before in this video, which if you'd like to check it out, I'll leave a link to it below. And then we have several instances of Africans in medieval Europe and ancient Europe, which is evident in some of these coats of arms and flags found throughout various European nations, which contain images of black moors. However, throughout most of the Middle Ages and all the way up to the early modern era, the land south of Sahara remained a place shrouded in mystery among Europeans, with the majority of their knowledge consisting of vague reports from Islamic merchants. So how were these initial encounters between Africans and European explorers during the dawn of the Age of Exploration? Were they friendly or were they hostile? Were Europeans revered as white guides or hairy demons? And did these Europeans conquer and exploit the lands or were they driven off? It wasn't until the middle of the 15th century with the Portuguese adoption of the Latin sail that any serious efforts were made by European merchants to sail south of the Sahara. The Latin sail allowed ships to sail almost directly against the wind. Without it, returning home from sub-Saharan Africa by sea was nearly impossible. Henry the Navigator was not an explorer himself, despite his namesake. However, he financed several voyages to the coast of West Africa with 1444 marking the year that the Sahara coastline was successfully crossed by Portuguese explorers Nuno Tristão and Denis Dias. They intended to sail south of the Sahara and practice what I'd like to call the three C's of European exploration. Capture, Christianize, and uh, civilize. This was done in an effort to make them useful for intelligence on the new lands and serve as interpreters for the new peoples. This was incredibly common in the New World by early European explorers including Christopher Columbus himself. In Africa, early Portuguese explorers encountered nothing more than a vast, wild, and barren wasteland, with very few men and little to no organized states in sight. The few men who were encountered were promptly taken back to Portugal. The lands south of the Sahara were an entirely different story. The fabled Land of the Blacks was finally reached in the mid-15th century, or roughly 50 years prior to Columbus. These early European explorers were fascinated by the dramatic differences they encountered. They often described finding healthy, large, and well-built black peoples, a far cry from the popular media portrayals of Africans today. These European explorers were also surprised by how well-armed and organized these black peoples were south of the Sahara compared to their northern neighbors. This is what Venetian explorer Cadamosto had to say about the region in the year 1468. It appears to me a very marvelous thing that beyond the river, all men are very black tall and big, their bodies well formed, the whole of the country green, full of trees and fertile, while on the other side, the men are brownish, small, lean, ill-nourished, and small in stature, the country sterile and arid. Upon arriving in these new lands, typical patterns of early European exploration ensued. Denis Diaz explored the Cape Verde Islands and Gori Island, and while doing so, he noticed large boats patrolling the nearby waters at a safe distance. He could tell that these locals were taking extra care not to venture too close to this strange alien vessel. The identities of these African warriors is unknown, however, they were most likely Neominka warriors, armed with bows and poison-tipped arrows, tasked with guarding their Gambia River borders in an effort to protect their commercial interests. Though the strategy or method is unclear, the Portuguese Carabao somehow managed to overtake one of the Neominka boats and capture four men who were promptly taken back to Portugal. This marked the first direct encounter between Sub-Saharan West Africans and Western Europeans. Two years later, Nuno Tristão returned to the region, only to be instantaneously met with a fierce resistance. He attempted to row ashore with two boats carrying 12 men each, where he spotted a town that he intended to raid. Little did he know, they were being followed by a dozen or so canoes, carrying a total of 70 to 80 locals. 
Not only were he and his men showered in a rain of arrows, but their attackers proceeded to row out to sea and attack his ship and crew, resulting in a total of 19 dead out of a total of 28 crew members. Those who survived fled back to Portugal with two of the wounded succumbing to the effects of poison arrows. In one instance, the caravel was actually hauled down river by the Neominka and dismantled. One year later, yet another expedition was sent out from Portugal, but this time it included several caravels. The ferocity and overall hostility of the Neominka discouraged them from landing. Despite this, one caravel commander rode ashore and placed down a cake, a mirror, and a piece of paper marked with a cross on it for reasons that don't seem very clear, but I assume it was probably meant to be a gesture of peace. The Neominka responded by promptly ripping the paper to shreds, tearing apart the cake and tossing it away, and throwing a javelin straight through the mirror. Infuriated, offended, afraid, or possibly a combination of all three, the Portuguese fired at the Neominka warriors with their crossbows. The Neominka fired back with their poison arrows, leading to many casualties on both sides. In 1455, Yet another Portuguese caravel was confronted by a force of 17 canoes, with an estimated fighting force of 150 men. Dispatched by the ruler of the Jagra Kingdom, the attackers were led to believe that white men were cannibals who sought to capture black people and consume them. These views parallel later European attitudes towards Africans, who would popularize the view of the barbaric African cannibal as a means to justify the exploitation of African peoples and their lands. It is not known exactly what ended the hostilities, with some sources claiming that the ruler of Portugal at the time sent Ambassador Diogo Gomes to establish peace, while other theories suggest that Portuguese military technology discouraged further fighting. Regardless of the reason, Catamosto made a voyage into the Gambia in 1456 and was allowed to pass into the river without any opposition. It is also during this time that the Portuguese had formally established friendly relationships with the Jolof Empire and the Fula of Fudatoro, relations that likely mediated and pacified the conflicts with the Mniominka as well as offer a new perspective for the Portuguese, learned that initiating trade relations among West African peoples peacefully was much more profitable than initiating it through violence or coercion. This harsh lesson learned is evident in Portuguese attitudes towards the inhabitants of the Benin Kingdom and the Congo Kingdom, just two and three decades later respectively, where encounters with these peoples was largely on peaceful terms, with the Portuguese treating the inhabitants as equals and revering their societies, art, and architecture. This was followed up by the establishment of formal trade relations and ambassadors from both parties meeting with one another's rulers in their respective kingdoms. This new perspective and peaceful attitude is one that wouldn't change collectively among Europeans in West Africa until several centuries later, with the establishment of the transatlantic slave trade and with improvements in European technology. I hope you guys enjoyed the video and let me know what you think down in the comment section below. And always remember, we don't come from nothing.